Hello everyone, it's Marion Wallace with Restoring Ghettos Forgotten and I am here today with a little conversational piece and it's about our youth and helping them create a bussin' bussin' personality. How do we do that? How do we get them well-rounded? How do we get them respectful? How do we get them uh, creative and empowered? How do we get them to the next level of their lives? That's what this video is about. Uh, if you haven't done so already, please feel free to click and subscribe on my channel. And if you believe this video is informative and that it can help someone else, please feel free to share it as well. Thank you so very much for clicking on my video. I appreciate you all. Um, I'm just gonna go right into it. Um, what I've been noticing with our youth is that they have become so entitled, and I'm not saying it's 100% their fault because we are the parents. Somewhere we dropped the ball. Somewhere, you know, we said yes to them when we should have said no, when their rooms weren't clean and they wanted to go do something major. And we just look at them and we just love them so much and we just say, oh yeah, go ahead. When we knew, we knew in our hearts we should have said, no, you can't go this time. You, you haven't cleaned your room in a week. You know, I think. In, in some cases that's what's causing the entitlement they feel like they don't have to work for anything they don't have to earn anything and their parents is just their servants uh, I hate to say it that way but that's how the world is becoming and it's it's sad it's really sad and I'm gonna bring it to the sad part the sad part is when I see or I hear of a youth that's in that's been brought up in a good stable loving caring home and they disrespect their parents. There's no excuse for it. There's none. And I'm trying to understand that the way of thinking and, and how, uh, how that sense of entitlement can even make you disrespect the, the person that gave you life or the people that have supported you and loved you along the way and really been there for you. How can you fix your lips to say one disrespectful word out of your mouth? And I'm saying, shame on you. Shame on you. And I'm talking to the youth because you have to believe inside of all of that warped way of thinking and the narcissism that's on social media that's creating these demon seeds to think that no, nothing else matters but them and their needs. It's, it's, it's just downright wrong and you have to believe it. In, in this life, we have to have order. There has to be order. And the first people you should respect and reverence are your parents, are your caregivers, and your elders. And I'm gonna bring... Hello, this is my continuation of my first video. I'm sorry, but I'm in this Texas heat and it is not playing out here. If my phone gets too hot, it's going to cut off. You guys, it's just gonna cut off, I'm sorry. Um, but I wanted to finish what I was saying. This is about uh, the disrespectful kids and how you have to understand it's going to affect your life one way or another. Uh, if you can actually fix it in your bones or in your marrow, whatever you want to call it, you can actually fix your lips to disrespect the very people that paved the way to open doors for you that they never had opened for them, then you're, ter you're terribly wrong and you're going to pay for it all. We have to know that there, there is a certain order in this life and nothing happens without that order. So you can't bypass the very people that sacrifice to take care of you and treat them like crap and walk all over them and expect uh, to, to think you're gonna, your life is gonna be blessed or there's gonna be good things come to you. No, it's gonna be the opposite. Uh, I, I hope it's not a lot of um, background noise. It probably is because I'm driving now. I can't sit in one place for too long because my car gets too hot, even with my AC on. So please excuse the background noise. But I wanted to make my point. I wanted to get my point across because I'm tired of it. I'm tired of seeing it. And I'll bring a, a little bit of it home. Um, I can remember growing up in a home where I absolutely had a right. Uh, you know, I had it to do because of where I was brought up in and the stuff that I witnessed as a child. I had a right to get angry or be disrespectful even to uh, the person that was the abuser. But I also had a balance because even though I lived with my mother and my father in all of that, I had a grandmother 
and my grandmother was a very praying and godly woman and she taught me about forgiveness and the love of God and order and, and all those things and how not to disrespect your elders. So I grew up with those seeds implanted inside of me so when I really needed them, they came out. And regardless of what people may try, try to say that you're a lame uh, because you talk to your parents well, I mean, they're the lame. If they want to disrespect their caregivers, the people that have given them life, and take care of them, then they're the lames, not you. You're just doing what God is calling you to do and God is calling you to be. And so I want you guys to understand that everything you do, everything, and I'm not just talking about uh, becoming a successful person because that seems to be, that's all what people talk about or care about. But you can't even believe that you're gonna be successful if you're disrespecting the very people that have paved the way for you and given you life. It's, and, and if you don't believe in God, because I know some people don't, there's something called karma. Whatever you put out in the universe, that's what you're going to get back. So this video is to challenge our youth to look at your, disposi your disposition and how well you treat your parents or your caregivers or your elders. And understand that you need to reverence them because of the sacrifices and everything that they've done for you. Now, I'm not saying all of our elders are good people. I'm not saying that. Some of them have really been some F-ups excuse my language but even though they have been if they gave you life they brought you into this world then that's enough to, to respect them even if you you can't ever deal with them again because some people some some of our parents are not we're not capable of dealing with them because they're still in their mess and so if we deal with them while they're in their mess then we're going to be in their mess and, and none of us heal so i get that but what i'm saying is you still don't need to disrespect them. You still need to show them respect, even if you have to handle them, like my grandmother used to say, with a long handle spoon. So we have to learn how to deal with each other, guys. We gotta be better than what we're being. And I'm telling you right now, I don't care who you are. I'ma call you to the mat. If, if, I see you, if I see you disrespecting your mother, especially your mother, but I see you disrespecting your parents and I know those parents have been solid and good to you. Oh, baby, yeah, we're going to become a community that day. We're going to become a community that day and we're going to get we're going to get at you because you don't have it to do. Many of you guys are disrespectful and just selfish and entitled. Don't even have it to do. You didn't grow up in the projects. You didn't grow up without. You didn't grow up uh, being abused. That you didn't grow up in trauma. And you still have the nerve to turn your lip up at your parent when your parent provided you with a safe, loving, and caring home. How dare you? How dare you? And you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. You better check it. Because when God gets tired of it, He's going to put a stop to it. And it's going to come a time when that loving, caring parent that you have that you, you're so horrible to is not going to be able to fix the shit that you done got yourself in. And then you're going to have to wallow in it. And you're going to have to go through with it. And if you don't have a connection to God, and many of you have a connection to God. Many of you have been raised in church. You know the Bible backwards and forward. And you still choose to be wayward. Then God has to deal with you. I'm sick of the bull crap, man. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of hearing pa parents go through and then they start questioning themselves. You don't question yourself if you bust your ass every day for your kid. Some of us went to school while we were working two and three jobs and we provided a safe, clean, healthy home for you. You don't feel bad for what was missed. You did the best you could. Now you hold your head up and you hold that child or that youth accountable. Stop enabling them. If, if they don't want to do right, then they don't get any benefits. They don't get any privileges. No, no, no. I am not. I was not put here. We were not put here to be our children's friends. We were put here to raise and rear them the right way. That's it. And so I don't care what uh, uh, feathers get ruffled in this video. Enough is enough. The streets, you know, and some of y'all had a nerve to want to run to the streets. What you know about the streets? The streets will literally, will literally chew you up and spit you out, especially if, if you ain't, you don't, you haven't been in the hood, you haven't been in the ghetto. You don't know what that life's about, but you want to go run to it? That's so pathetic. These people want to get out of the ghetto and out of the hood and your dumb ass want to run straight to it. Excuse my French, I'm tired of the bull crap, man. 
You don't have to live like this. Y'all use that term busting, busting a lot. Why don't you make your souls and your energy busting, busting? Why don't you, you learn how to respect your elders? Make that busting, busting. Because y'all with the bull, man, and we calling y'all out right now. And I'm calling the parents out. Y'all can't be no weak-ass parents letting these kids do whatever the hell they want to do and you still supplying them with everything they need. They need That needs to stop now. Because at the end of the day, and this is the point I'm really trying to make, and I'm trying to hurry up because I know my phone's going to cut off again. But the, the point I'm trying to make is when your uh, youth, when your parents are, are gone, when that mother or that father, many times they're not, it's just the mother. But when that mother is laid to rest and you no longer have nobody to, to cover your BS, who are you going to depend on? You're going to have to deal with it yourself. Why not learn how to be a functional adult while your parent is still here? While you got that backup. Instead of waiting until she's gone and then you're going to look like a fool because you ain't going to know which way to start. So that's why we parents have to exhibit tough love. And we have to be okay with not being liked and being hated for a while until they get their shit together. Point blank. I'm done. I'm done for today. Uh, but I wanted to get that out. We, we tired of the disrespect. The disrespect has to cease. Period. We're not accepting it no more. You, you got to deal with yourself. And I'm going to make a quick comparison. And I hope this brings it home. And this, this this lets me know that we still got a lot of work to do in our communities. But youth, if you're out pushing away the good people, the people that love you and mean uh, the best for you, they want the best for you, they've showed you with their history because they stuck around. That's a big sign when people stick around. Yeah, that's a really big sign. So that parent stuck around. They loved you. They supported you when you got sick. They gave you medicine. They took you to the doctor. They took you to the hospital. They stayed up and they held you. And they went through the, to the ends of the earth with you. If you mistreat that person, and then you turn around and treat the person that abandoned you and walked out on you and didn't care if you ate, uh, if you ate that night. They didn't care if you had a, a safe place to lay your head. They didn't care if you had shoes on your feet. And, and, and you, you, you want to salvage that relationship over the relationship where the person was loyal and they was there for you. It's something wrong with your inner self and you need to deal with it. I'm telling you now because somewhere you got love and bullshit mixed all up. You got that love part mixed up. Somewhere you learned how to love and receive love incorrectly. And that's the part you're going to have to get right. Because if you did, if you mistreat the person that love you, that means you don't love yourself. You haven't figured that out yet. You got to love, learn how to love yourself so that you can give love correctly and receive it correctly. Period. So really, really take a, a look at yourself and, and kind of figure out and I know that's the hardest part is for us to look at ourselves and find out where in our life that we are our own poison. But you need to find out what's your poison. Like, what do you do that's detrimental to your success? Success, And it starts out with how you treat people. I don't care who you are, what you have, where you come from. If you don't know how to treat another human being good, you ain't, you, you're not accomplishing anything. Everything you do is in vain, period. And if you're doing it to the people that love you, you got to know that energy alone is going to disrupt any type of blessings that God may have for you. Period. I'm done. Uh, but I, I just wanted to put that out there. You, you got to get it right. You got to get that inner man right. I don't care how beautiful you are. I don't care how handsome you are. I don't care how smart you are. If you don't know how to respect your elders or your peers around you, your, your caregivers, the people that paved the way, then you've lost it and you need to find it again. Okay, I'm done with my little rant. I hope it wasn't too noisy with the background noise, uh, but I love you guys. Remember to always keep God first and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.